fuck was that? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know the speed, to girl Claire B coming after the new video. So today we're gonna be talking about Love Is Blind season four, episodes nine through eleven. Now let me just let me just let me just talk about these two people, like, cause we gotta talk about these two people, Marshall and Jackie. We have to talk about them. We we just have to. So obviously episode eight left off with Jackie and Josh having a conversation at Chelsea's birthday party. So then I guess the night is over. We see Jackie and Marshall getting back to their shared apartment. Um, Marshall wants to know like, what's up? Obviously it's late, but you know, he wants to know like, what's up? Because they were left off in like, you know, a very unknown place you know they don't she's thinking that they're good they're on a, the same page they're all cool and he's like he doesn't know what's going on really you know what what is it what's going on like what do you need from me so we can progress in this relationship all that so she's just like i'm tired i we can talk about this in the morning but he's just like like give him a solid answer like let him know what are we doing in this relationship do you want to continue this relationship? She's just like, you know, let's just save it for tomorrow. So, you know, in that conversation, it went nowhere. Marshall didn't really get an answer. She just basically, you know, was just like, I'm tired. Like, you know, that was it. So then next thing we know is that the girls were having, you know, uh, you know, they were having their wash, their dress shopping, and then, you know, the guys were having their suit fitting. And, you know, we see the girls come in except for Jackie. So Marshall, he's not there. He's also with the guys. And, you know, he's trying on suits and, you know, getting his suit fitted and everything. Because, you know, with that being said, you know, if Jackie's like, you know, you know, we're good and stuff like that. You know, she, he thinking that, okay, we can still continue with this process, you know, whatnot. So he's getting his suit fitted, but then, you know, the girls are like, where's Jackie at? So Tiffany is like, yeah, I thought Jackie would have been here, you know, to even just like try to, you know, go through, you know, the whole thing, see it through, see it, see it out, see it through. So, you know, that, you know, friendship between Brett and Marshall that's a real friendship. So Tiffany texts Brett and she's just like, Jackie's not the, the, the fitting. She's not here at all. So Brett, he pulls Marshall aside. He's just like, yo, Jackie's not there at the wedding, you know, the dress shopping, you know, it's just so you don't get blindsided or anything. She's not there. You know, he's giving her, he's giving, he's giving him the one, the up and up, you know, because he doesn't know he's a, a, like literally oblivious to what's going on right now you know so he's like you know tiffany just said she's not there so then we see where jackie really is so jackie's at this coffee shop sitting there waiting for josh sitting there waiting for josh while she's still engaged to marshall while she didn't even tell marshall where they stand in this relationship at all josh comes to her with flowers Basically, this is a date, you know, there he's talking, giving out his feelings like, you know, um, I didn't have a say in what happened and blah, 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 and this and that. And, you know, I just let Marshall take you and whatnot. And, you know, I didn't have a say in my feelings and stuff like that. Like, oh, I really do like you. I really do care about you. Da, 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 da. So then Jackie's over here saying, you know what? You know, I feel like I robbed myself. Um, you know, I don't even care. Like he, Josh asking him, asking Jackie, like, did he even tell Marshall? Jackie over here like, no, and I don't even care. And like, you know, I chose wrong and this and that. Then after their date ended, 
she gets up, hugs, and kisses Josh while she's still engaged to Marshall. Marshall is oblivious to the fact that she's even on a date with Josh, that she's feeling like they're they're done with this relationship. Like, he didn't even get a text message or anything like, you know what, we're over, we're done. You know, she decided to go about her business, you know, while she's still engaged with Marshall, to basically do that to Marshall with no forewarning at all. And it's like, that's like so low down and nasty. And I'm just like, say what you want to say about Marshall. Marshall's not the best guy ever, but like, he did not deserve that at all. Like, what did the man do to deserve not even getting a communication that, hey, you know, we're over. I'm not even going to go to the dress fitting. I'm not even going to go here. You know, I don't think this is, I think I didn't pick the right choice. All that. And you, while you're still engaged to the guy, you kiss another man. So I'm just like, what are you doing? So then, you know, Marshall is like, he's hurt. Because if, yeah, if Brett didn't say that Jackie's not at the dress shopping, he wouldn't have known. So he's hurt. So when he gets back to the apartment, you know, Jackie's laid up on the couch texting somebody. So he's like, I need answers. I need answers. Like, what's going on? So she's over here like, oh, you know, you know, I think we're done. Or I think we're over, blah, 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 blah. And I think I you require a lot, you know, when we came back from Chelsea's birthday party, you were pressuring me to get an answer out of me. And, you know, I was telling you, we can talk about it tomorrow and blah, blah, blah. And then I, that was the last straw of the relationship. And the thing is, Marshall's over here like, I never expected anything from you. I just wanted an answer of what are we doing in this relationship? You know, she said that, oh, she said what she said about being more aggressive, whatever. And, you know, he left for three days. I don't know. You know, because obviously it's a cool off or whatever, granted. And, you know, she felt like, you know, you know, him leaving because, you know, she asked for him to be aggressive was like, oh, you know, he shouldn't have done that, da 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 Then, um, you know, him asking her about, like, where do they stand in this relationship after Chelsea's birthday party was like the last straw. So then... You know, he's just like, it, everything I did was on your terms. You know, when you were crying in Mexico, he was, you know, consoling you. When you were going through it, he was consoling you. He was making sure that you're good. He's making sure that you're okay. So I'm confused, like, you over here putting the blame on him. Like, oh, he was pressuring you and you require a lot in the relationship. And da 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 So Marsh was like, give me back the ring. Because you shouldn't have even accepted my proposal if you didn't want to get, you know, engaged to me. So this girl had the audacity to say, no, I'm going to keep it. Because I did, in the pause, I did want to marry you. So he's like, it's whatever. It's okay. It's whatever. Like, I don't even care. You know, I want you to think about that ring and realize what you gave up. I chose wrong. Jackie, the woman that presented herself to me in the pods, that's the Jackie that I love. This Jackie. The deflecting, the gaslighting, the deceitful Jackie. I don't know who that is. And apparently that's the real Jackie. I wish her nothing but the best. If that's with Josh, do your thing. Good luck. So he was just like, I'm cool off it, whatever. And I I give him props for how he handled that you know situation. I also give him props that he stuck to his word because he told Josh at Chelsea's birthday party, if you can steal Jackie from me, you can have her. And what he said, you can have her, okay? He, he uh, Josh can have Jacqueline, okay? So he, he stuck to his word. He ain't, you know, fighting for no Jackie. He said, if, she can, if you can be stolen from me by you, you can have her. And that's what it is. That's what it is. Then the funny thing is that she told Josh that, you know, in this experiment, you know, I'm not I'm not ready for legal marriage, but I can, you know, see how it goes with you. You signed up to be on a show which ends up the result of being married. 
So if you weren't ready for marriage, why did you come on this show? You told Josh that you weren't ready for legal marriage. And now we can just date around and see how it goes and whatnot. The next thing you know, she changed her tune on some, you know, because right now she's obviously with Josh in present day and said that she wasn't ready for marriage with Marshall, but she is ready for marriage in general. So she's with, she's still on the stuff that, you know, Marshall is too much for her to handle. You know, she's not ready for that marriage with Marshall, but she is ready for marriage in general. So she's trying to like put up that, you know, Marshall did this, that, and third, and she just wasn't ready for it. And she's like on a defense. So I don't know. But she's still wrong either way. Um, She's still wrong. So that was basically Jackie and Marshall's relationship. They're done. They're ended. They're definitely not getting married. Um, Marshall definitely deserves better. And... Yeah, I don't, you know, Jackie called Irina a peasant and in episodes one through five. But you keeping the ring after you call off an engagement is bum behavior. That's bum behavior. And then the thing is that everything you did was just nasty and low down. And you still decided to keep the engagement ring. That's but peasant behavior. Like you don't, you have no room to be talking. Like you know, Irina was like the villain. You know, the bad mean girl. But you know, Jackie just top. You know, she just topped it. And I don't know at this reunion because it's gonna be a live one. I don't know how that's gonna be. You know, because she might be defensive like how she was in that interview. But, you know, I hope somebody comes to Marshall's defense or Marshall can hold his own and basically say his two cents because he's been going about it like really civilly, you know, giving her, you know, the t- grace or whatever, like letting her live. But she's on the defense and acting like he was the problem the entire relationship, which is just like, you looking mad silly. Like you looking, what it was like, what are you doing? But that's the, that's over with them. You know, they're not getting married, so we're down to four couples who is engaged and, you know, seemingly ready to be married. Anyway, so next up is Chelsea and Kwame, and their relationship is a bit on a different dynamic. Um, Chelsea's all in. She's, like, ready to be married to Kwame and everything, but the thing is, is Kwame's mother is just not for it. She definitely did not give the rights for you know, Netflix, Love is Blind, to even have her voice on the show. She's not answering his calls, you know, she's just not for it, you know, at all. And, you know, she's not coming to his wedding. Um, So that's a big thing because, you know, Kwame's mother is a big part of his life and everything. And also on top of that is that Chelsea is not compromising in this relationship. Meaning that she's not having to move, she's not having to give up something in the relationship, which Kwame is. You know, Kwame has to leave his place in Portland, Oregon, and, you know, he has to, you know, live with a dog, you know, all that. You know, he has to give up his friends who's in Portland, Oregon, all that. He, you know, Kwame seems to be, you know, getting her way. You know, and she's not really compromising. So he's like feeling like, you know, a bit slighted in the fact that it's just like it seems unfair for him to have to do that. You know, he's still, you know, being on terms with the situation. So you can understand his side of this thing. And then on top of that, his mom is not approving of his marriage. So it's just like you got that and then that. And, you know, you got everybody in Chelsea's family like being approving and, you know, encouraging And, you know, she gets to live her day-to-day life like normal, everything. And, you know, it seems like, you know, this past week we see the Barbie trailer and, you know, we see the memes where it's just like, oh, you know, this is just, this person is just, this is, this person is Barbie and he's just Ken. And in terms of Chelsea and Kwame's relationship, it seems like Chelsea is the Barbie while Ken, Kwame is the Ken, the accessory, you know, he doesn't have a say. He just basically has to go along with what Barbie says, 
or with what Chelsea basically Kwame just goes along with what Chelsea says so in that comparison if any I don't know if anybody can see that comparison but that is basically what is giving to what Kwame sees you know he sees that he just has to go along with what Chelsea's saying he doesn't really get a say all that so you know he's having his cold feet bout uh, Chelsea's all in um so then we get to their wedding day we get to see the beginning of their wedding and we actually see Chelsea's siblings you know Chelsea's um, not Chelsea's we see Kwame's siblings Kwame's brother and sister came to his wedding day um his sister Barbara you know was very sweet you know it was very nice to see their in his inter the interaction between his siblings you know um it was very nice to see you know you know Barbara was just basically giving a backstory a bit about you know her and Kwame's upbringing and you know that you know their father is very approving of the relationship he's very excited for him but you know the mother is very like you know she's you know still not for it so just like if you still need like some support that's for your you know relationship you know your father still is rooting you on you should call him talk to him you know Kwame still wants to talk to his mother because his mother has basically always been there for him so it's just like you know he's feeling it and it was very nice to see you know his older brother pray for them over their marriage and everything it was very nice to see that um it, it was just very nice to see and then Barbara comes and meets Chelsea and her family and her friend it was a very nice meeting it, like Barbara like yeah it was very sweet so we see Chelsea at the altar very nice like looking everything it, everything's great you know Chelsea says her vows then she evidently says yes and then we get Kwame who says his vows and then he's get, he gets asked a question of saying yes or no and it just ends so we don't know what Kwame says I feel like even despite the cold feet, he's still gonna say yes. So that's them. So next is Bliss and Zach. And, you know, Bliss and Zach, you know, they get to see, you know, they meet um, Bliss's mother and her sisters. And that was a very sweet meeting, you know. You know, Zach ends up telling Bliss's mother and sisters the entire story of how they got engaged, you know, and, you know, um, Zach basically lets, you know, Bliss's mother and sisters know that, you know, his mother passed away. And, you know, I don't think he has anybody else really as a parental figure in his family. But, um, you know, it was very sweet to hear Bliss's mother say, you know, I will be your mom, you know, whenever you guys get married and stuff like that, you know, I'll be your parent. And it was quite sweet. Um, the interaction between Bliss's mother and Zach and, you know, sisters was very sweet. It was very sweet to see their side of the family. But it was very much contrast to when Bliss, Bliss's father comes into the mix with his stepwife, his, you know, his, you know, her stepmother and his, you know, their kids. Um, it was very contrast. You know, the step, her father was just not for it. She was just like, you know, he was just like, you know, I hope you're making the right decision because it just seems like you're getting married to just get married. You know, you're not making a logical decision in like just 20 days, like 20 days, you know, 20 days, that's very illogical. Like you're crazy. Um, he was just not for it. He, you know, after he figured out that Zach wasn't a sports guy, he was just like, yeah, I'm tired of listening. You know, basically when Zach started to talk about, you know, his litigation and everything, he was just like, yeah, he just zoned out. Like, I don't even think he was hearing Zach. Um, but he was just basically, they just had like a little big, a bit of a tiff, basically, you know, Bliss telling her father, you know, she, you know, she wouldn't be here. She didn't love and love Zach and is ready to marry Zach. And, you know, her father's just like, yeah, you're not, I don't think you're making the best decision for yourself. So their dynamic, um, yeah, it was just very much contrast between her mother and then her father. You know, obviously Bliss's mother and father are divorced and, you know, he remarried and has his own family of his own, you know. 
Zach's mother has passed away. You know, Zach had that comeback because, you know, Bliss's father asked, you know, what does your parents think of that? And he's just like, my mom is not here, you know, so she would be not having any dots at all. So just like, well, <laughs> yeah. But obviously Bliss and Zach, you know, obviously, you know, Bliss is very nervous about the whole situation. Um, you know, after Zach seeing that Bliss's father is not really, you know, there for their relationship at all, you know, he might be having some type of doubts about the situation. But it was quite sweet to hear them hear Zach at the bachelor party basically saying, you know, there's like signs that shows that Bliss is his person, you know, the owl thing, you know, um, her and him having, you know, the same song for their wedding day, you know, those type of things. And, you know, it's just quite interesting to hear him say, like, these are all the signs that were there. But I'm just like, what made you drawn to Irina? Like, niceness or her being nice or affectionate is not the only thing that draw you to Irina to be like, oh, yeah, her over bliss. Like, I don't know what was going through his brain, but he better thank God that he got that second chance because like you, you're saying in the pods, you know, the signs that showed, you know, Bliss is his person was that they had the same wedding day song and that, you know, they both have a, an affinity for owls. So very confused, very confused. But yeah, um, obviously they're going through their nervousness. You know, she's nervous, you know, he might be nervous. That is duh. And that's basically it. Um, so we're there, we're we're there. And then last but not last, next we have Tiffany and Brett. Tiffany and Brett, obviously, you know, Tiffany got to meet Brett's father and brother, which was a very nice meeting. Um, basically, you know, Tiffany explains why she loves Brett, you know, why he's the one for her and everything was a lovely meeting. You know, they get to talk about, you know, you know, Tiffany's going through it, basically kind of like stressed out because of the whole wedding planning. And, you know, Brett decides to do something very nice for Tiffany. You know, basically he took pictures of, I guess, their engagement or whatever. And it was very nice and sweet. He took her out on dinner. It was just very nice. Like he really took her out, you know, let her calm down from the wedding jitters. It was very sweet. Um, I feel like Brett and Tiffany are going to get married. Um, obviously, you know, previews and everything would like you to think so. But um, I think they're gonna get married. Um, they're basically the one to beat. Like everybody loves Tiffany and Brett. Like that's the one that you have to keep her, you know, make sure you know they're gonna get together. Like they just seem very good for each other. Um, then last but not least is Micah and Paul. Micah and Paul, um, they just seem kind of awkward, but I feel like they seem very good for each other. Um, you have Shelby being very skeptical still about their union, their engagement. Um, and she just basically keep on saying like, you know, I don't think he's the right one for you. Like he's nice and all, but you know, I don't like, I don't think Paul's it. Like you deserve better. So she's basically saying like, Paul's not it. And you know, it was quite nice to hear Micah basically say out of her own mouth, like Paul, like me and Paul really click, you know, when he's not here, I'm always wondering where he is. You know, she's looking for her Paul, you know, the fact that they're on their bachelor party and she's FaceTiming him. Like they're supposed to be at the bachelor party and you're FaceTiming Paul. And basically saying that you're gonna come crash his party like and then she basically tells you know the cameras like hey i don't think shelby understands that what me and paul have like and she basically told shelby and her friend ruby that i just hope that you guys can be there for me with whatever decision i make because you just have doubting shelby that's keep on saying like oh i like him but i like him but and i'm just like what is the but like, what's wrong with Paul? Like, you're not giving any reasons to why Paul shouldn't be the one for Micah. 
which is just like, what's going on here? So we just, I guess we have that doubt of Micah, you know, feeling from her friend Shelby that maybe Paul is not the one, but you know, she's basically keep on telling them like, yeah, he is really good. He's really cool. He's really nice. Like all of that. I think Paul, he even himself is very like, he really cares and loves Micah. So I don't think he's swaying anytime soon. But we never know because things can change. But um, that's them. But next episodes, we're going to see Brett and Tiffany's wedding, Felicity and Zach's wedding, Paul and Micah's wedding. And we're going to see if Kwame gets to say yes or no. We get to see if Kwame gets to say yes or no. So I'm confused. Kwame's name is Alex Kwame. Alex Kwame, so his, his real name is actually Alex and not no fake name. Hmm, seems like we, we judged him too quickly. But still the, the still the insight of him using Alex. When I heard Chelsea say Alex Kwame, I'm just like, oh, so Alex was his real name. Like he wasn't just finding like an, an English name just for, you know, the fun of it. That's really is his real name. But him taking off Kwame still has some... Um, you know, context to why would he do that? So therefore, there's still context to why would he just go by just Alex? So, yeah. Um, but anyway, last but not least, Jackie definitely needs some help. She definitely needs somebody to give her some help. The realest thing that she said at the end was that, you know, maybe I need to do some self work. And that was the realest thing that she said. Um, because I'm kind of figure out, I'm trying to figure out what did Marshall do to deserve that? Like, you couldn't even give him the courtesy of letting him know like, hey, we're done, you know, like I can continue on with this relationship. He had to come home from his, you know, suit fitting, you know, without, if he didn't get to know from Brett, like, hey, she's not showing up to the dress fitting, you know what I'm saying? He would have, you know, he would have still be, uh, you know, oblivious to the fact that she's over here having dates with Josh and kissing him. And I'm just like, right up in the cameras. Like, you know the cameras are there. Like, that's how disrespectful you are. The cameras are right there. Like, obviously, the cameras weren't hidden. Like, obviously, you still agreed to, you know, still be on camera. You did that disrespect disrespectfully on camera to Marshall. You know, I want to see what happens at this reunion. This reunion is going to be live 8, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern. You know, Sunday, April 16th. You know, I want to see what's going on at that reunion. But yeah, she was very disrespectful. She basically became the top number one villain of this season. Like, I don't know what, what she is on, but she needs some help. Um, last but not least, this was episodes 9 through 11. It was just like, what on what on what? Josh and her can go through the bin. Her and Josh can go through the bin because that's rubbish and anyway guys if you like this video like the video comment down below let me know your thoughts comments concerns and you're not subscribed to my channel subscribe anyway thank you guys for watching this video peace